Hey guys, Giggity back with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the 11-game MLB slate for 7 o'clock tonight, July 24th, and it's the first, like, real slate of the year. We had the two-game slate yesterday, but this, this is what Baseball DFS is all about. We got all these teams today, and, uh... It should be a fun slate. Um, going back on yesterday, where we had like a one and a half game slate, I wasn't really too big of a fan. It wasn't really that good of a night for me, but it should be a better night. I, I was just way too much over the field on the Nationals, who only got one hit. So, not really a spot that I, I wanted to go for the leverage. It just didn't pay out for me, but... Hopefully tonight will work out very nicely. I have some stacks that I really like. Um, and if you wanted to discuss this anymore, uh, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Or you can go into my Discord, which is in the link in the description below. And I'll try to be on there as much as I can later. Uh, one more thing before we jump into it. Uh, I did get to join a, uh, I did join a website. Uh, I'm a content creator now for Tilted DFS. So if you want to go and follow them, there is their Twitter handle and uh there is their uh, website they if they're a free website uh and they have premium they have articles for csgo mlb nba nfl pga ufc and then my favorite part of the website is they show when i've posted um so they have all my videos from the past couple days so if you want to go ahead and get into that uh, go ahead and check out the website and check out the articles they, they they're a pretty good group of guys we have about seven or eight of us now so um, go ahead and check out the content but without further ado oh and subscribe to the channel but that one's pretty self-explanatory like share all that stuff let's get into it We'll start off with the Miami and Philadelphia game. We'll get Aaron Nola versus Anta um, Anca Antara. Cannot speak. Go ahead, jump into Play IQ on Rotor Grinders, where he, they do have the projected starting lineups. So what it looks like, the projected starting lineups for Miami will be Villar, Aguilar, Dickinson, Ramirez, Anderson, Diaz, Alfaro, Rojas, and Bentry. And... I do like pitching in this game. Um, Aaron Nola strikes out about 27% of his batters. Uh, and for the most part, uh, these uh, Miami hitters strike out like 23, 21, 21, 28, 33. So you are going to get these Marlin p hitters that strike out a decent amount of time. Um, and then... As far as their ISO, which is their isolated power against who they're the, the handed pitcher that they're facing against, the only one that has a decent one is Dickerson, and because he's the big lefty bat, he's got a point uh, point two seven four uh, or two seventy four uh, ISO against right-handed pitchers, exclusively Cole. Um, so if I was to get a piece from the Marlins, I like Dickerson today. I'm not really going towards a full-on, like, stack from the uh, Miami. I might get, like, 2 to 3% of a Miami stacks just to cover my butt, but I'm not really too big of a fan of the Marlins today, especially against the Philadelphia Phillies. If you go on to the other side, where I might have a little bit more interest... If my thing wants to work. Really? It was just working earlier. <laughs> um, now my thing decides to freeze, really? There we go. Oh, okay. Nope. Come on. Okay, there we go. Um, on the flip side, we do have Alcantara, which strikes out about eight percent of eighteen percent of his batters, 
which is not that good compared to most of the other players on the slate. And, um, I mean, the, the batters from the, uh, from the Phillies do strike out a decent amount. The top five on the batting order, all over 20%. There's only two players that don't strike out over 20%, and that's Didi DeGoris and Segura. But, uh, on the flip side, there are ISOs against right-handed pitchers. 226, 225, 207, 310. So I do like going to the Philadelphia Phillies today for stacks, um, especially stacking the top five or two through five or two through four. Or just getting some Philadelphia in my life is all right with me. Um, I'm not totally going against it. Um, I probably am going to avoid the bottom part of the lineup just because I do I'd rather get the players that are going to get more at-bats. Uh, and Segura's not really that too high of a... I mean, he doesn't strike out often, but he's got 100 ISO against right-handed pitchers. So, not really too big of a fan of that. So, if I would go into him, top six in the order would be all right with me for the Philadelphia Phillies. Go ahead, jump into the next game, which is the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago Cubs, where I might get a little bit of stacks. Um, starting off, Woodruff strikes out about 20, uh, 29% of his uh, batters, so that is a decent clip that he does. Um and the the only problem is most of these hitters don't strike out that often. Rizzo strikes out less than fifteen percent. Brian does strike out twenty three. Baez twenty eight percent. Schwarber twenty four percent. Contreras twenty five percent. Boti twenty five percent. But look at these isos against right handed pitchers. Uh, it's kind of hard not to. Not to go towards the Cubs again, to, uh, Cubs today as well. Um, Rizzo will be a really nice play. Bryant's going to be a great play. Baez is going to be a nice play. Schwarber's going to be a nice play. They are going to draw up some ownership, so I would definitely be a little bit careful about go- getting too much of them. Because um, a lot of people are probably going to get to the Cubs. I sp- um, how, is their, how are their pricing? Uh, if they'll even, there you go. They're probably, they're not priced terribly. 4,900 for Bryant, 48 for Rizzo, 46 for, you can definitely get to these guys in stacks. Uh, you're probably going to have to go downgrade on your pitcher. But um, if you wanted to get to Cub stacks, it's definitely a viable shot of being uh, of being a good stack tonight. Move over to the Milwaukee side. Kyle Hendricks, I'm probably not going to get too much of. He strikes out about 20% of his batters, which is not good. Um, and considering, I mean, the middle of this order strikes out uh, anywhere from 21 to 30%. So, I would be all right with maybe getting to a tiny bit of Kendricks. But he is not really a strikeout pitcher. He gets more of his outs on, like, ground ball. Well, ground ball is about 43%. And, uh, well, fly ball is 34 So, I wouldn't really... Be interesting getting that much Kendricks today. Although, uh, it, it could be a decent like option considering he's at seventy four hundred. So that could definitely be a, a a viable spot to get to for a value play of sorts, but. I'm not sure if I want to get to too much. As for the Milwaukee batters, um, Kristen Yelich, Hura, 
brawn, smoke, uh, smoke, all good options. Even Lorenzo Cain, even though he has a point oh, uh, a ninety four ISO against right handed pitchers or against Kyle Hendricks, no right handed pitchers, I really feel like it's okay to get to him. Uh, he doesn't strike out that often, only seventeen point one percent compared to everybody on this team. That's pretty low. Um, so I would be all right with getting to Kane, all right with getting to Yelich, Hira, and Braun. I will I will be getting some Milwaukee stacks. Not that many, just because there's a lot better of options on the slate, but I am going to be getting to a tiny bit of Milwaukee. Moving on to the Cleveland Indians and the Kansas City Royals. And this will be the first one where I distinctly say I am getting to 1% Kansas City Royals, if that. Um, it's not really a spot that I want to get to, considering that Shane Bieber is one of the best pitchers in the league. He strikes out about 32% of his batters, 30% of his batters. And the fact that Kansas City is not that good. Um Maryfield and Solaire would be the only ones I would actually have mild interest in, but they would primarily be one-offs. Um, it's just that, I mean, we don't have any stats here for Paris, but some of these batters are striking out 31% of the time, 25% of the time, 35% of the time. It's just Kansas City is not a good team. And going up against Shane Bieber, who – is priced at 10-3. I'll definitely be getting to a decent amount of Shane Bieber. He's one of my, yeah, I, he's my favorite, say, 9K plus pitcher on the slate. Him and Nola would be my favorite two 9K plus pitchers on the slate for payoff options. So I will be getting to a decent amount of Cleveland. I'm not getting to any Kansas City Royals. As for the uh, Cleveland batting side, I love Cleveland today. Going up against Duffy, and look at the look at the lineup they're throwing up. They could throw up against a switch hitter, switch hitter, switch hitter, switch hitter, which they'll all bat righty against Duffy, who is a left-handed pitcher, and he got righty, 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 righty. So no lefties against a lefty pitcher. That's fantastic. He strikes out 20%. That sucks. All these guys on the top of the order, 10%, 8%, 14%, 13%, 15% strikeout rates. That is really, really low. I'll say Cleveland is probably going to be one of my favorites. They'll be in my top three stacks for today. Uh, they will be a little bit chalky, but that's one I'm okay with, um, okay with eating the chalk with. Um, I'll get to a lot of Lindor, a lot of Ramirez, a lot of Santana. It's just a solid spot to get to, and I don't. And considering that Duffy is not that good of a pitcher, I'm quite all right with going the to go all Cleveland and probably xing out Duffy altogether. That game we'll move on from. Next one up is Boston and Baltimore, and this one's gonna be pretty similar to the last game we just broke down. We'll start on the Baltimore bats because they're quite underwhelming. Um, the only one that I really would be okay with getting to is Haynes. Um, I like I'm all right with getting to uh, Boston's pitcher Nathan Eovaldi. Uh, strikeout rate of 23%, but he is going against Baltimore, which is borderline Triple A team. Um, they're probably going to be the worst team in the league, so just move on. Uh, rule one of DFS, for the love of God, do not draft Chris Davis. Um, his ISO is terrible. His K rate is way up. Uh, just do not draft him. He is not good anymore. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to get to any Baltimore. Probably the 1% just to save my ass, but I do not think I want to get to much Baltimore tonight. On to the Boston side. It's another one of my higher-up stacks. Um, I don't mind 
getting to pieces of one through seven in this order. Uh, these are just the projected lineups, by the way. Keep an eye on all the lineups as much as you can before lock. Um, and then recommendations for um, building your late uh, building for late swap. If there's two players that they have a shot of, put the more expensive one in first so that if it's the other guy, you can easily pivot off to that uh, through DraftKings. That will be a lot easier. Just keeping that in mind. Anyways, uh, Ben and Deddy, I'm all right with. Uh, Martinez, I'm all right with. Devers, Bogarts. I'm going to get to a, lot, a, a decent amount of Boston. They'll probably be my fourth or fifth biggest stack today. Um it's just a decent option for me to get to. Uh, Malone is not a good pitcher. He strikes out 20% of his batters. Um, and he's, I just don't like going up against... Um, I, I feel like Malone is not going to be a good option. And Baltimore is not going to be a good option today. Uh, so just avoid them. Play a little bit of Boston. But the Boston Red Sox will be, some, will be chalky a little bit. So keep that in mind moving on to the colorado rockies and the texas rangers they're going to be in texas so it's not a course slate which is quite nice but texas is the second most hitter friendly ballpark so i don't know about this one um i don't think i want to get to either pitcher uh, it's just not really an option i want to go towards and it's not like, uh, yeah, Lance Lynn at 89 and Marquez at 87. Not really a spot I want to get to. Um, as for the batters, I wouldn't mind getting to like 3 or 4% of each stack. Not really too crazy on these. Um, since you chew, I'd be all right with just the if you're gonna grab some, just grab the top six and flip them around and just build around that. If you're going to it, if you're building a single entry, I'm not getting to this game that much. Um, I feel like it's gonna be a chalkier game, so getting to it might not be a fantastic choice. And on Colorado side. Keep in mind, all these numbers are inflated because they play in cores. Uh, going up against Lance Lynn, he strikes out about 28%. So if Lance Lynn has a decent game tonight, he probably could rack up seven, eight, nine strikeouts, which uh, as long as he gets a win, 8,900 might not be a bad price for him. Um, but as for the Rocky Bats, Dahl, Story, Blackman, Arenado, and Murphy would probably be the five that I would be all right getting to. I feel like in an 11 game slate, you don't need to get to the bottom three of the order. It's just not really worth it. Now, if a bottom three hitter goes and hits a home run, tip your hat, move on. But if anything, I'm getting to decent. Uh, I'm getting to about. 4% for stacks for these for this team um, and just moving on from this one I feel like that game will be a little bit chalkier so not really a spot I want to get to all that often moving on to Minnesota and Chicago where this is going to be my favorite game for hitting M me personally I think this game is going to go way overlooked um, considering that the pitchers for this game are Berrios and Giolito, which are at 96 and 9,500. I like the pitching. Uh, I'm sorry. I like the hitting for this game. I feel like this one will be a little bit more uh, offensive. Um, I'm getting to probably about 6 to 7%, maybe a little bit higher, of Minnesota with Kepler, Blanco, Cruz, Donaldson. Rizzo. Look at all this green. For the ISOs, I do like that. And their strikeout rate, besides Cruz and then Sano, which at the bottom of the order, not worried about them, are all are all on the greens and really good. I don't mind getting to it. So, um, I'm getting to a decent amount of Minnesota today. 
Um, and then on the other side, I don't mind game stacking this with the Chicago White Sox. I have a feeling that this one's going to be a high-scoring game. So I'm going to be getting to a decent amount of both of these teams. Uh, Barrios strikes out about 23% of his batters, which is decent. But I, I don't mind getting to Anderson and Mikata and Abreu and Encarnacion Grandal. Just the top six here. Just getting stacks of both of them and even stacks of them in the same game. I'm totally all right with going with just game stacks of this game and that would be the leverage play. I don't I, I think this game's gonna go under own with Boston on the slate, with Cleveland on the slate, with both LA teams on the slate, and Houston. I think this game's gonna go under own. So this is my leverage spot for today. This is where I'm going. Um and I, I'm hoping that one works out. Moving on to Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Um, where we'll have Musgrove and we'll have Flaherty. Flaherty at 9K, Musgrove at 69. I can see myself getting to a tiny bit of the Cardinals. I'm not going crazy with them. Their overall stats are not nothing crazy um, against righties. They are running out some left-handed bats. But uh, I just see uh, – I, I, I would rather see myself get to other teams than the Cardinals. I feel like the Cardinals are going to be a little bit chalky because they're going up against the Pirates, and the Pirates are not a good team. Um, and Musgrove's not really that good of a pitcher. But I could definitely see myself getting to like 3 or 4% of St. Louis. I'm going to fade them. Uh, I just don't feel like – I want to get to as much of them. I, I feel like there's better spots for me on the slate than to get to the Cardinals. On the other side, Pittsburgh, I am not. Uh, I'm not getting much of either. Uh, if anything, I'm going to get to more Flaherty, who strikes out 30% of his batters, than getting to the Pittsburgh. Maybe get to about three, four percent of Pittsburgh, and if anything, it's just the top six, and it's nothing crazy with them. Even though. Most of Pittsburgh is anywhere from 12, uh, 11 to 23% strikeout rate. Their ISO is not really that high against right-handed pitchers, and I feel like there's just better spots on the slate to go to than the Pittsburgh hitters. Moving on to the Diamondbacks and the Padres, where I feel like this could be another game where it would be all right to get a little bit of exposure to for your hitter. Um... You got Paddock and you got Mad Bum on the on the bumps at 86 and 84. I feel like the pitchers are going to go a little bit owned. I don't think the batter is going to go that owned. And I do think I want to get to a decent amount of Arizona and, and San Diego. Um, and even game stacking them. Uh, Paddock does strike out about 27% of his batters. But uh, some of the ISO is on here. For the uh, for the Diamondbacks against right-handed pitchers, 247, 250, 202, 236, 208. I'm all right with getting to all that and um, getting to the Arizona Diamondbacks. So might be a decent option for me. I love how he doesn't even close the door. Um, but then going on to the Padres side of it, which I'm all right with as well, uh, getting to stacks here. Um, Mad Bum is not where he, what he used to be. Uh, he did just sign the major deal in San Diego or in uh, Arizona. Sorry, I was clicking on San Diego looking at that. Are they going to work? Anyways, I am going to get to a decent amount of the uh, San Diego hitting just to go against Mad Bum, just to get a little bit more leverage on the field. Um, my computer doesn't want to show it for some reason. That's fine. Um, but I am getting to a game stack of this one essentially and uh, as well as 
the um, as well as the Chicago Minnesota game from earlier. So okay, cool. It does. It's freezing on me now. We'll move on. Um, got three games left. This one's going to be the Seattle and Houston game. And I'm going to see myself getting to a decent bit of Verlander. He is at, what, 11,000? Uh, he's at 11.4 Verlander for his price. So little bit expensive, but I feel like it's justified. He strikes out about 35% of his batters. And most of these Seattle hitters have a lot of strikeout, a high strikeout percentage. So I do, mind, I do not mind getting to Seattle pitching, or Seattle hitting, um, and getting to Verlander. No, I don't want to get to Seattle pitching, uh, hitting. I don't want to get to anything Seattle today. Um... Very, very little. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, no no Seattle, maybe 1% or 2%, but that's pretty much about it. Houston's going to be very, very chalky. I'm still going to get to about 4 or 5%, but I'm going under the field on them. Even though they are going up against Gonzalez, who strikes out 17% of his hitters. Um, but the Houston Astros... Don't strike out that much. So, um, besides Maldonado, but that's in a very short uh, 113 lineup. Um, no. Well, none of these guys have a high clip for anything, but um, they are, they all don't strike out that often. They're very plate disciplined. Their ISOs are high against left-handed pitchers, minus Michael Brantley. So, if you're going to fade somebody from the Houston, fade Michael Brantley. But um, they're going to be chalky tonight, and they should be. Uh, going up against Seattle, but I'm just not getting to as much of them today just so I could try to fade that chalk and get to uh, um, other spots that might be a little bit more beneficial. Moving on to our first LA game, LA and San Francisco. We actually just saw them play last night. Clayton Kershaw got scratched. Saw a decent game out of May, decent game out of Cueto. The Dodgers ended up winning that game 6-1, was it? Yeah, 6-1. But for today, I have no problem getting back to the Dodgers. They're going to be chalky, but I'm going to... That's one of them that I'm going to get to a decent amount of, even though they're going to... Um, they're going to be chalky. I'm going to get to some as well. Uh, Mookie Betts, Muncy, Turner, Halleck. Oh, sorry. Bellinger, Seager. Get to all of them. Um... Kiki Hernandez was actually the the big gun last night, and I had a good chunk of him, so that was the only like positive factor um, for the Dodgers San Francisco slate going into the ninth inning. I had a lineup that was in fourth place that ended up finishing like twenty something. So, um, and I had Hernandez as captain. I had a decent amount of him, so that was nice. Smart job. Not really getting much of. He strikes out eighteen, nineteen uh, percent of his batters um, with his. X-fin at, uh, exit, X-fip at 5.08. Um, I get to a little bit of Dodgers, not really getting to any Giants. Uh, I'm not getting to Stripling. Um, I don't think, he strikes at 25%, but I don't see him going crazy tonight. Um, if anything, I'd be all right with getting to some of, um, some of the Giants tonight, um, especially the top of the order with you see, see Dickerson, Pence, Sandoval, and Flores. I wouldn't mind getting to those five. Um, but the only if I would have to fade one, Flores at a 99 ISO, um, I'm probably going to get to a little bit of uh, not that much of him compared to the top four. Um, and now the last game of the day, which I feel like is going to be another very offensive game, is going to be the Angels and the Oakland Athletics. Um, I am going to be getting two stacks of both games, probably 4 or 5% of each. Um, 
Trout, Oshani, Upton, LaSala, Pujols will be the ones that I get to a lot. So four, uh, two through six in the lineup, I'm 100% okay with. I'm not getting to any of the pitchers today um, just because I don't want it. Um, 8,800 Montias and um, Hensley at 8K. There's just better options in that price range, and I like the batters a lot more in this game, um, especially from the LA side. But I feel like another stack that's going to go quite under owned is Oakland. Um, and I'm probably going to, they're probably going to be another one of my favorite stacks tonight. Simeon, Lorano, Chapman, Olsen, Chris Davis, the good Chris Davis, and Kana. Two through six, no problem getting to him. Um, Henny does strike out about 29% of his batters, but I'd rather get to some. Uh, I'm going to get to a decent amount of this game, probably about four, uh, five, six percent uh, for stacks for each one of these game for each one of these teams. Um, so I really like this game and. It should be a high offensive game. Their aces are not really that good of aces, and I can see this one being a good one. Fun one to watch as well. So that's pretty much going to break it down for the 11-game slate today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead. You could either DM me on Twitter, link in the description below. Um, go ahead, follow Tilted DFS. You can also enter my Discord, subscribe to the channel, do all that stuff. Um, and I'll be back with another video tonight on tomorrow's slate. So good luck today, guys, and uh, let's have a good one.